this is uh, my, Joe with My Fence Direct, and this is Khalil, the homeowner. Uh, today we're going to be doing his uh, first fence. Today what we're going to be doing is an aluminum fence around a pool area. And what we're going to do is we're starting right in this area. Now it is going to leave an opening, but the homeowner is going to be replacing this after we are done. So what we're going to do is follow around this, um, this curve. And with the aluminum, you'll see that there is play with it, okay? We're gonna follow this all the way around. And this is where it's a little bit different than your typical install. Because as you can see with over here, you have this steep slope here. So by the time we get to the back section, there's about 15 to 18 inches worth of um, exposed concrete. What we're going to be doing is installing the post on the outside edge of the concrete because as you can see, there's not a lot of space on the decking. So we're trying to maximize as much space as we can. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing is putting the posts in the ground, but for extra stability, because it's gonna be about 15 inches above you know, ground level, we're gonna be putting in the uh, redheads, the uh, concrete screws, so that way it'll hold everything nice and steady and secure. Once we get to these areas where we have more of a turn, we're gonna to have to put in um, a few extra line posts and panels, uh, cut sections. They might only be about two to three feet wide, and it's just so we can swing around this. Once we get to this area, we're gonna make a straight shot to this, um, his steps here and finish here. And we will have a gate on this side and a gate on the other side. And the one thing to remember, especially with pool areas, is that you wanna have the gate swinging out. So one thing to keep in mind, cause you can see here how his ground slopes up. So you, we can't have a gate here because when it swings out, it's just gonna hit into the ground. So we're gonna put that more in this area because it flattens out more. What we're gonna first start doing is the, uh, the first of the three things you really need to learn, uh, which is how to dig a hole. After that, we'll do how to set a post, and then we'll get to where the gate is and we'll show you how to hang a gate. So what you're gonna need is a um, pair of post hole diggers. Um, they sell all different kinds at the store. Um, this is the kind that we've been buying recently from, you get, to get these at Lowe's. They're metal, they last forever. So if you're like me and you start this project and you start your own fence company, this is what you're gonna end up using. Uh, so it's easy, you're gonna keep your hands together and with force, you're gonna push down and then pull apart, go like this. Now, if you have a lot of roots and whatnot, what you're going to do, I did the first hole like this, then we're gonna go from this side to break up any roots that are in there. Just move this to the side. Now, this is a little bit harder. Let's see, of course there is is probably concrete um, from the uh, patio. Next thing we're gonna be using, uh, it's called a digging bar. It's basically two sides to it. One, you got the pointed side, which we use for digging. And then the other side is the, uh, the flat side. This is what we're gonna use to pack the dirt and the uh, concrete. So what you're going to do, easiest way, is to go into the one side of the hole, and then you're gonna push over. Kind of like this. Yeah, it's just a little bit of concrete. And this just is used to loosen everything up. And for a project like this, since we're going so close to all the, uh, the pavers and the concrete, you really can't use an auger. But if you do have a larger project, you probably do want to rent an auger. You can get them from Home Depot or Lowe's. As you get closer to the bottom, because you, you don't have as much leverage, what you can do is grip more down towards here, and then you're going to rest your forearm against it. It'll just help with the leverage. And then when you think you're close, you're gonna take your post. And then what we're gonna do is put this about two inches above the ground. So you can see we're probably like four, so we have to go down a little bit more. And let's see how we look. It's pretty good right there. Okay. Now, if you did dig too deep, what you would end up doing is just taking some of your dirt, put it underneath, and then put this on top. Now, if anything, you wanna keep this a little bit on the higher side. The reason for that is after we're done installing, we're actually gonna hit these posts down so that every way everything's nice and level for you. So what you wanna do next is just put in a little bit of dirt and we're gonna pack that down. And then after that, we're gonna start adding the concrete. 
and then you want to just make sure that your holes are going in the direction where the post is going in the direction for your next post. If it gets twisted, then you just want to take it out and reset it. So that's about good there. At that point, we're going to be adding the concrete. We're using 80 pound bags. Now you don't need a full 80 pounds for the uh, aluminum fencing. You probably only need about 40 pounds or so. So after we have that in, at the next point, we're going to use the um, bar to pack that down. So it's nice and secure. So what we're doing now, since they dug the hole, is we're installing our first section. Now you do want to pay attention, uh, there's screws on one side and not on the other side. So it doesn't really matter what side you put them on, they do suggest to put the screws on the inside of the fence. But you just want to make sure that you are consistent. You don't want to have one panel with them in and then one panel with them out. It's just going to look a little sloppy. So they're going to insert it into the post. Just slides in. We find that using it, the impact is a lot easier. And you're just going to take your three screws. There's one for each rail. And they get attached. So once that's attached, you're going to put the other uh, post and attach that to the panel. Once you have that where you need it, then you're going to make sure everything's uh, plumb. And then at that point, we're going to add the dirt and then the uh, concrete. Okay. So the next part is we're going to be adding our gate and uh, these gates are four foot wide. So the difference with this is we are not measuring from the center of the post for the gates. We're measuring from the inside. And for this, the gates, even though they say four foot, they're about an inch and a quarter shorter than that. So you want a four foot opening, okay? So what we're gonna do is measure here. So we're about four foot here, and this is where the end of the post has to be. So this, we're gonna mark right at about the 49. And that's where this is going to end up being. What you'll notice around pool areas, especially when you're dealing with patios, they typically do backfill them um, with some kind of aggregate. The problem with that is it's extremely hard to get through no matter what you are using to dig with. A lot of times you only get through about an inch at a time. But once you get to the dirt, then it's kind of smooth sailing at that point. You do want to make sure you're, uh, you know, making sure everything's plumb. And then what you want to do to double check yourself is uh, two extra items. First, once you have everything set and um, you add your dirt, you want to make sure that your distance down here, if it's going to be 48 inches, should be the same up here. Because if this is slightly off, but you make this perfectly plumb, then it's just going to be off for you. The other thing you want to do is you're going to take an extra post and you're going to put this right on top. And what you'll do at that point is you're going to put your level on top to see how level you are. So in this case, we're way off, so this post is just gonna have to come down. Again, we can just hit this um, with a sledgehammer and a block of wood. So this is the only post that we're gonna be wet setting. Well, actually there's two gates, so we're gonna be doing two of these. So the reason for uh, wet setting is we wanna make sure this is as rigid as humanly possible right from the get-go, um, just because we're gonna be hanging in the gates today as well. So what I do, now the directions on the bag, it says that you can just pour in the concrete, add in your water and you're done. I personally don't like that. What I like to do is add some water at the bottom. Okay. From there, you're going to take your digging bar. You're going to have your concrete laid like this and you're just going to poke holes in it. And for this, we're going to put in about a third of the bag. And then after that, we're going to add some more water. Okay. Next, we're going to take your digging bar, and instead of using the, uh, the flat end like usual, we're going to use the pointed end. And the point of this is just to poke holes to make sure that the water is getting down. And if you notice, if you look inside the hole and there's a puddle of water in there, you don't want to add any more water because you don't want this too soupy. The other thing you can do, since you don't do this every day, if you have uh, two pairs of, actually you need four pairs of wood clamps, the other thing you can do to make sure that these are uh, perfectly where they're supposed to be is you can take your post, put one down here, make sure it's at your 48 inches, come up to the, uh, no, clamp them, sorry. Then you do the same thing here, put a post across, clamp that, so that way this is right where it needs to be. At that point, all you have to do is make sure it's plumb so it's not you know, leaning in either direction. 
After that, we're just gonna leave this sit and we're gonna continue on. This, uh, typically in about a half hour, you can hang your gate. Um, once everything hardens at that point, then we will add the dirt and pack that as well. But we just want this to get as rigid as possible. When you're screwing in your the screws for the panel, when you tighten them all the way, it, all, it naturally makes it kind of in line. What you want to do is screw them in and then back them out a little bit so that way you have the flexibility. After you set your post, then you're able to screw it in. So what we noticed here is we're just about an inch shy of this working perfectly for two full sections. So instead of running two full sections plus a little piece, what we're going to do is have two cut sections on either side with a full section in between. So it looks the nicest that it can. Um, for this, this is probably the hardest part of the whole installation. The key is you wanna use an angle grinder is what I found to be the easiest. You can use a hacksaw, but it takes forever and it just doesn't work as well. If you end up going with the angle grinder, you wanna make sure you put on a metal cutting wheel. Um, it'll just make your life easier. Or if you're into like tiling and whatnot, you can use a turbo blade uh, that does work as well. First thing you wanna make sure you have is your safety glasses on because you don't want metal shavings going into your eyes. And then what we're going to do is mark on the fence where we're gonna be cutting. You can find uh, the easiest way I found is uh, getting these silver uh, Sharpies. You can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Staples, wherever, but they do mark everything on the black surfaces. So what we're going to do is we're gonna cut this roughly about a um, little over three feet. And when you cut, you wanna look at where the pickets are. So you really don't wanna cut right at where a picket is. Um, or actually you can cut right here but we want to go a little bit more. So in this case, we're going to go right about the 38 inch mark. And so what we're going to do, is take this and we're going to cut here. Okay. So we're going to cut at the 38 and that's going to be the uh, full length. Okay. So we're going to mark this up here. Same thing. So come to 38, just double check to make sure you actually cut at 38, especially if you're doing like half inch sizes, because you'll find out that you should have cut at 38 and a half, and it turned out that you cut it like 37 and a half or 39 and a half. And uh, here we go. So we're gonna just cut straight through. So this is the last step, which is hanging the gates, except for the cleanup. And like we said earlier, what we need to do is make sure that the posts are the same height. So we're going to do this as your level. And you can see that it's very off at this point. So what you can use is either a block of wood. In this case, we have a special cap that's made for vinyl that we end up using. And just put this on top. Okay, and it's pretty good right there. Okay, so once we have that, the next step is you wanna lay your gate. I would highly suggest laying it in front of the opening. The reason why you wanna do this is, even though I own a fence company, I can't tell you how many times after the entire install, especially because you're going to be tired, this is all done in one day, where you put the hinges on the wrong side. So you want to make sure, and you can stand this up, put it right in front of the opening. And in this case, we want to open this out this way, since we have the, uh, the decking over here and the stairs where that's going to be. So the hinges are going on this side and they're going on, you know, on this face and on this side of the gate. And as far as spacing, typically we're going to put one about here. So it's gonna be right in the center and about two inches uh, b below this. And then we'll do the same thing here. Now on here, when you open it up, they have these little lips here. That's how 
you want it to be pushed all the way over. You don't want it off because then it's not going to be as secure for you. So when you push this over, you want to kind of have the screw pressed against the left side because if you put it more towards the right side, it's going to push this over, which you don't want. Okay, we have that. And the one thing I did not mention so far in this whole process is, and I put it in the uh, fence buying guide for you guys, but you want to make sure that you buy the magnetic um, holders, the 5 16 The reason why is if it's not magnetic, the screws are going to constantly fall on you or, you know, fall off of this and you're just going to go crazy all day. Right there. Perfect. And then you can just finish screwing in the rest. If you want to come over here, what you'll notice is there's actually the gap up here is slightly off compared to the bottom. And what we're going to do after we've uh, set everything is at the end, we're just going to hit this post slightly to the left. So that way everything will look nice and neat for you. What we have next is your uh, magna latch or the trident. Um, it's both the same thing. Um, it basically uses a magnet and you pull up. Uh, Basically, it's the safest one that you can use. It is the only pull code approved uh, latch style. This is something you want to double check what you're doing as well, because you have two parts. And again, it's worth by a magnet, okay? So this piece is gonna go on the non-gate side. And then you have this piece here. So again, so this is what it's gonna look like when you're done, okay? I can't tell you how many times you do want to uh, line this up for yourself beforehand because again at the end of the day you're going to be tired and what you're going to end up doing is putting this over here and this here. It will work but it's just going to look a little ridiculous. Whether it's magna latch or trident is it does come with keys for your wife. She'll feel much better so you can lock these. Um, they, uh, they use the same key no matter what so you'll get two sets in each one keep one on you. Uh, I would suggest keeping one on your key ring because whenever you come out here, you're going to forget it. On this latch, there's two extra pieces I didn't show you yet. These go on here, okay? And same thing, you want to hold it up. And the way you're going to put these on, you have the little piece that goes to the top, slides right in, and that bigger piece at the bottom. The way you'll double check yourself is when everything's done, it's going to be sitting on here and then we're gonna screw in here as well as inside here, okay? So once you do that, you're gonna be sliding this back on. And we're gonna get that about flush where it needs to go. We're gonna leave that alone, and now we're gonna do this side. We're gonna have this about there. Now, once we're done, we're able to move this piece out, okay? So we have it about there. Once we have it secure, now, similar to the other one where you pull this up, the only difference is there's a little screw in here. Now, it does say in the directions, uh, you definitely, when you're not used to doing this stuff all the time, you definitely want to use just a manual screwdriver. You do not want to use power for this because you might end up stripping the bolt. So because this was on an angle, we did have to keep this gap a little bit um, wider than usual, um, but this is fine. So this latches properly as is now. So you just want to make sure everything works. So you want a slight gap here, like you see. You don't want it all the way touching because when it, uh, between the summer and the winter, this will expand and contract. So you just want a little bit of space for yourself. So now at this point, no one can pull this out. And like, same thing, you, it's always going to be safe for you at this point. So after you lower all the posts, the next step is just to put on the caps, do your final cleanup. You could use a uh, sponge and a bucket if you would like to do that or get a hose. And after that, you can enjoy your fence. Project's done, and uh, Khalil, uh, how was the whole process? Uh, the process was it, was, it was fairly easy. You know, I didn't really have too many problems with it. Uh, went online and was able, you know, there were simple selections of, of, of the sections of fence that I needed to, uh, to get. I uh, was curious about, you know, how many sections and posts and all things of that, but customer service was phenomenal. Awesome. Uh, it was a simple phone call and, and uh, and uh, uh, I was walked through everything, you know. Uh, I was asked to provide a sketch, you know, for, for better clarity. And uh, once I provided that, you know, I was given a list of everything that I needed, sections, posts. Uh, I couldn't be more happier. Awesome. And uh, what did you think about the actual installation? Was it as difficult as what you were thinking or is it a little bit easy? Obviously, physically, it's a little tough. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, 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 it's some hard work, but, but uh, very simple, very simple. I thought it would take, you know, 
two to three days, you know, but we knocked it out in the day, good time, uh, and everything just flowed, you know, one thing after another. So it was, uh, yeah, I think anybody can do it. All you need is a shovel, <laughs> or right. all you need is a post hole digger and a digging bar, that's it. Exactly. Well, I appreciate again you choosing My Fence Direct, and uh, if you ever need anything in the future, give us a call. All right, thank you. Absolutely.